from nations across the world. soul a follow for the locks in sin. Give to me her passion as I seek to win. Help me not to falter, never let me fail. Fear me with that spirit, let thy will prevail. Set my soul a
Everybody said all over the world the GCK spirit is one verse 15 it says so as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Here you find the expression of the desire of Paul the Apostle. Not only the desire, but the zeal, the passion of Paul the Apostle. And he said, I am ready. 
the preaching of the gospel is so important and every believer must be ready every believer must be available second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 preach the word that's a command preach the word that's an imperative preach the word that's a non-negotiable it says be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort without long suffering and doctrine then he tells us in verse 5 but watch thou in all things endure afflictions as we go out uh, preaching the gospel or making contacts with people so they can come and hear the gospel and as we connect with people it might be a little bit inconvenient sometimes to are rising up earlier than you normally rise up or there may be some physical conditions that may bring some difficulties through those difficulties we're going to preach the gospel in spite of those challenges we're going to preach the gospel do the work of an evangelist is work you see many people don't realize that evangelism is work they think it's for leisure but it's as much work as the work of any other person in society think about the work you're doing the energy it takes to work the zeal it takes to work the skill it takes to work everything it takes to work bring everything into evangelism because it's work do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry paul the apostle he didn't allow any situation to pass without making proper practical positive use of that situation in the city he preached the word in the in incarceration in prison he preached the word anywhere he found himself he preached the word and he said in all the palace in all the other places too my bonds in christ are manifest and many of the brethren in the lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear what's that saying it's saying because of the way god has sent me to be faithful then the influence of that, the destruction from that, the passion from that, the zeal from that got into other people. I pray that your own uh, involvement in the work of God will influence other people positively in Jesus' name. We're united. So that whether you are in this district or in that other group, whether you are in this city or that other city, the same thing we're doing here, the same thing you're doing where you are. We're united in purpose. We're united in passion. We're united in the drive that we're going to get the gospel to everyone around us so that the same success we see on the right, that same success we see on the left, the same success we see in the city, that same success we see in the town, the same success we see in the town, that same success we see in the village and everywhere that this gospel is getting to it will penetrate every community in jesus name whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever we're reaching everyone the men and the women the boys and the girls the high and the low the ones in the town the ones in the city and the ones in the village everywhere we're going to saturate everywhere with this preaching of the gospel if they have not heard about jesus how will somebody come to a place he has not heard about how will somebody take something he doesn't know anything about they must know about him how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher if you're a preacher and you're quiet if you're a preacher and you're silent preacher and you're hiding the message if you're a preacher and you're not opening your mouth and you're not opening your mouth wide for the people to hear how shall they hear the gospel of salvation it is the greatest message that man has ever heard the gospel of uh, the gift of god and the grace of god is the greatest gift the world can ever have and you know as you think about your society anytime you you wake up anytime you're going anywhere somebody at the bus stop is announcing something somebody where people are gathering together there's a bus there a mini bus there and somebody is even using a you know loudspeaker and he's saying that you know this one will do you good and this one will they advertise advertisement everywhere as you're going if you don't hear their voice you see the 
a large billboard is advertising something as you even want to answer your phone you know advertisement is coming as you're looking at it, maybe you use computer you use ipad and as you are checking up some things on the internet advertisement is coming as you listen to the radio somebody is advertising something at the so you hear the television somebody is advertising something there's advertisement all over the world and everybody is saying something and presenting something to somebody somewhere but think about it all the things they advertise in any way with any gadget and with any opportunity everything they advertise they are not up to the value of the gospel you have in your hand you have the greatest commodity you have the greatest item and you have the greatest thing that will bless people here on earth and bless people even in heaven thank god i have something let us not be weary in well-doing i will not be weary i will not be tired i will not be weak in jesus name let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. The Lord has called us, and remember, do all the good you can. Remember, to all the people you can remember, in all the ways you can remember, at all the times you can remember, in all the places you can remember, by all the means you can remember, as long as ever you can. I am ready. I said, I am ready. Who is ready there? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord? Welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in the peculiar things He reveals to us in His Word in Jesus' name. And the Lord will get us into the Word and make us go beyond the ordinary. I didn't hear your amen. And the power of the Lord transforming power of the Lord will make you peculiar anywhere you are you'll be spotted out that the gospel the truth is working in your life yeah. father we thank you for this hour thank you for your calling thank you for your word we're asking Lord that your word will so change transform our lives and make us different, distinct from all the people around, anywhere we are in Jesus' name. The grace, the godliness, and the glory that Christ brings to every life will be reflected in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Galatians chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 12. Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 12. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as she am. Ye have not injured me at all. Verse 13, ye know how through the infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. Verse 14, and my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Verse 15, there is, where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Verse 16, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, verse 17, they zealously affect you, but not well. Ye, ye, 
they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Verse 18, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing and not only when I am present with you. Verse 19, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Verse 20, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Those are the precious verses we're looking at today. Let's divide the message to three parts. The message is traveling until believers be fully formed in Christ. Traveling again, traveling in prayer. Traveling again, but traveling in ministry. Traveling again, traveling in the preaching and teaching of the word until they be fully formed in Christ and until these believers are fully formed in the Lord. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the apostle received as an angel of God. Number two, their aff affection reflected in accepting the gospel. Number three, traveling ambassadors refocused awakening to his grace refocused on awakening to his grace look at number one number one is the apostles received as an angel of god look at uh, galatians there chapter 4 verse 12 brethren i beseech you i beg of you i plead with you be as i am for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Verse 13. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you as at the first. In verse 14. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus, the apostle, received as an angel of God. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, recommitment to apostles, apostles to Paul's pattern of apostleship. Number two, remembrance of Paul's preaching despite affliction. Number three, response to Paul's persuasiveness as to an angel. Look at number one there. Number one, recommitment to Paul's pattern of apostleship. He declares this in verse 12. Look at that verse 12. It says, brethren, it was referring to the Galatians because he had preached the gospel to them. They had repented of their sins. They had believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, as the only Savior, as the sufficient Savior, as the transforming Savior. Because of that, he called them brethren. He said, I beseech you, I beg of you, I plead with you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Be as I am, for I am as ye are. What could he mean by that? The Galatians were Gentiles. Paul the Apostle was a Jew. And as a Jew, normally and naturally, the Jews had nothing to do with the Gentiles. Their ways of life were different. Their pattern of life totally different. And the things they ate, and the things they drank, and their culture, and their lifestyle, even their religious background, totally different. Now Paul the Apostle forsook all the Mosaic law, all the Mosaic rituals, and he became as a Gentile. And he did not distinguish himself anymore or differentiate himself anymore from the Gentiles. He went to them. 
He laid for them. He preached to them. He ate what they ate. He did not count anything common or unclean. And he abandoned the mosaic law. He abandoned all the lifestyle of the circumcised people. That's what he meant. He said, be as I am, for I am as she are. When I came to you, I dropped all of Judaism. I dropped all of circumcision. I dropped everything belonging to the Jews. Now, because of that, you were converted. Because you saw, I declare to you that the gospel is not Jewish or Gentile. It is for everyone, and Christ is for everyone. And you believe that. You became new creatures in Christ. Your life changed now. I became as you are, like a Gentile. Now, I stay in the grace of God. I preach the grace of God. Be as I am. I forsook all of Judaism. Be as I am. I depreciated. I destroy the very foundation of circumcision. Be as I am. I look up to Christ. I depend on Christ. I remain in the grace of Christ alone. Be as I am. I become a new creature. I don't look at this as gentle and this as you. Be as I am. My life is centered and my life is focused on Christ and Christ alone. Be as I am because I have been as you are. I became like a gentle. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 20. It says, unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Verse 21, he says to them, that are without law, like the Gentiles, like the Galatians, to you that are without the law of Moses, I came to you and as you are, so I am. And so I want you to be as I am as well. It says to them that are without law, as without law, be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might be gain them that are without law. You know what he's saying? I became like you are, that I might gain you, win you, bring you to Christ, so that I do not allow the Mosaic law or the circumcision or all those rituals to stand as a stumbling block between you and your salvation. I became like you are to save you to serve you, to win you, and to convert you, and to bring you to Christ, be as I am, to also win me, be as I am, to, to uh, take and to keep my interest. I have sacrificed, I have denied myself, and now you are also to sacrifice and deny yourself, I'm as sure you are. Be as I am. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Verse 23, it tells us, and this I do for the gospel's sake, that he is, I abandon the mosaic law. I abandon the Jewish law. I abandon all the culture of the past. This I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Galatians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I to the world. Galatian believers, brethren, be as I am, 
I'm crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. All those things that glitter like gold in the world, I want none of them. All the things that tempt people and they want to submit and surrender their lives to the world, I want none of them as I am dead to the world. So be like me and be dead to the world. Already, you see, I'm dead to the comments of the people in the Jewish nation. They might say, Paul, the apostle, what's he doing? He has abandoned Moses. He has abandoned circumcision. He has abandoned all those rituals. He has abandoned all the things that he used to do. He's now a new man. He said, I don't mind that because I am dead to the world. I am crucified to the world. I'm like you are, like a Gentile now, so as to bring the gospel to you. Be like I am. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth any sin, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Verse 16, it says, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Let's look at number two here. Number two, remembering the remembrance of Paul's preaching despite affliction. Look at verse 13 of Galatians chapter 4. You know, I was through infirmity of the flesh. I preached the gospel unto you at the force. He said, you must remember, when I came to the province of Galicia, there were difficulties, there were challenges, there was persecution, there was affliction, there was infirmity, but through the infirmity of the flesh, I didn't say, I can't uh, go there, I can't reach them, there are thorns on the path, there are pebbles on the road, and the road there is loopy, and and uh, tricky and there are dangers over there I came in spite of all the persecution in spite of all the predicament in spite of the infirmity in spite of the affliction how I preach the gospel to you at the force with all those challenges actually everywhere Paul the Apostle went there were some difficulties and challenges and afflictions but he didn't mind look at first Thessalonians chapter 1 reading from verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. We acted as if there wasn't any problem. We acted as if there wasn't any challenge. We acted as if there wasn't any pain. We acted as if there was no affliction and no infirmity for your sake. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, in much opposition, with much infirmity, with all the pressure and the pain that came upon us, we kept on going and we kept on preaching and we kept on pushing because your salvation was very much important to us. With joy, the joy of the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, And ye became followers of us, in verse 7, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. The gospel came to you and you saw our sincerity and you saw our spirituality and you saw our sanctification and you saw our transparency and you saw that we were resilient. We didn't mind the problem or the pressure or the affliction or the infirmity or the persecution. When you saw that, you became examples to you and followers of us and to all that believe in Achaia and in Macedonia. Then in verse 8, in verse 8, he tells us, For from 
you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. Then in verse 9, for from you sounded out, for they uh, themselves show of us what manner of entering in we urge unto you, how ye turned to God from idols. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays to keep on preaching and to keep on pushing on and to keep on persuading those seekers so they come to Christ in spite of affliction, in spite of infirmity, in spite of persecution, in spite of the trials, in spite of the thorns on the way, because it yielded the conversion, the salvation, the transformation of those Gentiles, the torch to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Then in verse 10, in verse 10 it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. To see multitudes of people delivered from the wrath to come, from eternal punishment in eternal hell, whatever affliction, whatever persecution, whatever infirmity we endure, so we can bring that life soul saving gospel unto the people. It's worth it. We're looking at uh, number number three here. Number three responds to Paul's persuasiveness as an angel. It tells us in Galatians chapter four, verse fourteen, and my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not. What does that mean? Uh, Paul, the apostle, as he went about preaching the gospel, there were times they stoned him. And it left some scars on his body. There were times they beat him. And it left some weakness in his body. There were times he was shipwrecked. And that left some mark on his body. And when you saw him, you will see that this has been a persecuted man, a beaten man. You will see that this man is a uh, stoned man. He had been stoned. And you see that this man has gone through a lot and it was telling on his body. Yet in spite of that, he went on preaching the gospel. And he didn't mind that there were six scars on the face or six scars in different parts of the body. Or they will see that it's not like, you know, as agile, as, uh, as able, as physically fit as a teenager. Because of what he had gone through. But all the same, he said, my trials, my temptations, which was in my flesh, ye despise not nor rejected but you received me as an angel of God even as Christ Jesus that he is they received the word that was for preaching as they would have received if an angel had come from heaven and spoken to them directly. They received the gospel he was preaching to them as if Christ himself would descend from heaven and preach that gospel unto them. As they will not argue with Christ, they didn't argue with Paul the Apostle. As they will not argue with an angel of God, they did not argue with Paul the Apostle because they received him, they received this message, they received this ministry, they received this ministration as if an angel of God had come to them, preaching to them. First Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 13. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, for this cause also we thank God without ceasing. Because when, when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you didn't look at our physical appearance, at our weakness physically, you didn't look at anything worldly, anything earthly, anything on earth, anything 
of the world, anything natural, anything human, but you heard the word of God, you received the word of God, which he had of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually walketh also in you that believe. That's how you received the word of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 19. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 19, therefore, wherefore then service the Lord? It was added because of transgressions till the seed shall come whom, to whom the promise was made and it was ordained, it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. When the, when the law came to the children of Israel, angels took part in the proclamation dissemination and in the telling them of that law and then Paul the apostle said like you say now in chapter 4 when I brought the gospel to you it was like the angels brought the law to the children of Israel and without arguing with the children of Israel or with the angel how why when how should that be you receive the same when I give you the gospel as if I was an angel of God. I pray that that same attitude will continue to manifest in Jesus' name. I thought that quarters will say amen. amen. Let's come to number two now. Number two, their affection reflected in accepting the gospel. We are coming to first, uh, we're coming to Galatians chapter 4, verse 15. Where then is the blessedness ye speak of? Uh, Paul the apostle reflected on the blessedness of the past, their acceptance of the past, and their readiness of the past in accepting the word completely as they reflected in this section. We're looking at number one, the former affection through God's grace. Number two, the failing attitude of the graceful Galatians. Number three, the fervent admonitions not for their good. Let's look at number one. Number one, the former affection through God's grace. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4 verse 15, it says, well, it's then the blessedness you speak of. For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your, eye, your own eyes and have given them to me. That's the love they had for him before. That's the affection they had for him before. They so appreciated him. And they were so grateful to God that a man shall come and show them the way to life eternal. That a man shall come and show them how to be delivered out of the darkness of gentle religion and to be brought into the light of the gospel of the grace of God. Of God. They so loved him. They so liked him. They so appreciated him. They were so glued to him in affection and intimacy that if it were possible, if he needed eye transplant, they would have plugged out their eyes and they would have given unto him. The same thing with the children of Israel when they first heard of the Lord and the goodness of the Lord, but the thing faded away. That's why Paul the Apostle now was saying, I could tell the blessedness, the affection, and the fellowship and the intimacy in the past. Where is that now? Where has that gone? Jeremiah chapter 2, reading from verse 1. In Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 1, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. 
the love of thine esp espousers when thou wentest after me in the wilderness and remember that long long ago in a land that was not sown look at verse 3 in verse 3 Israel was holiness unto the Lord the Lord looked at them and he said things are different now with you Israel when I look at the at the past and I look at the blessedness at the joy of following the Lord at the devotion in following the Lord at the obedience of the past and as your attachment unto me and I see you now I can only say Israel was holiness unto the Lord actually what the Lord desires what the Lord demands what the Lord delights in is not that we will be like that then and not like that now he wants Israel to be holiness unto the Lord now he wants the church to be holiness unto the Lord now he wants you as a member of the body of Christ to be holiness unto the Lord now he wants that same affection he wants that same first love he wants that same devotion he wants that same transparency and he wants you to remain holiness unto the Lord every day and every moment at every crossroad and wherever you may be whatever may be happening holiness it was uh, Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase all that devour him shall offend evil shall come upon them says the Lord in Matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 10 Matthew chapter 24 we're looking at verse 10 and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another in verse 11 it says and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many then in verse 12 it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold he does not want our love to wax cold he wants us to continue and he wants us to keep on loving him with all our heart with all our soul and with all our mind he does not want to use past tense for our salvation, for our sanctification, for our holiness, for our service, for our affection, for our intimacy unto Him. He wants it to be the ever present experience that the way we loved Him in the past, we still love Him like that today. But because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Then He says in verse 13, but He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What a revelation that uh, the joy of yesterday is not enough for today. The faithfulness of yesteryears, that's not enough for today. And the commitment and the consecration and the love of God of yesteryears is not enough for today. It's not an historical experience. 19 such and such, 20 such and such, I was born again present day expectation of the Lord is a present life in holiness and righteousness I remember many years ago I was sanctified that's not enough it was a present testimony a heart that is purified a heart that is circumcised a heart that is holy totally yielded and submissive to him on the altar I, I, I used to have a high standard a high standard of living for God that's not enough he wants that high standard of the Word of God to be maintained until now and until he comes that's why he said that he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved in verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world in all the world to the end of the world 
church whatever is happening there's pandemic there's problem there's plague there's disease there's a poverty there's economy there's this and that whatever is happening this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations unto all nations unto all nations and then shall the end come it says we must increase in our reach we must increase in our touch we must increase in our penetrating our world with the gospel that this gospel of the kingdom must be preached shall be preached and you must you must search to know how you know there are people that will say all i'm doing this is all i know it does not enough in the world today this is all i know this is what i have learned things are changing and you must change if you don't change you become irrelevant i remember what we were teaching in those days i mean 30 years ago i mean 40 years ago i was teaching the normal normal teaching we used to use the chalkboard and we used to use our chalks and dust and everything that thing doesn't work today in education. If you don't know computer today, if you don't know how to use the internet today, if you don't know how to send your lectures, your lesson through internet today, if you do not know how to put your grades now on the media that those students will just, you know, they, they, they connect and they get their result, you are not relevant today. If you are the teacher of 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and it is the old, old method, you will be out of service the same thing with the gospel as we have the gospel now and Jesus himself said that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations now the way um, Nebuchadnezzar uh, did it if he wanted to send his uh, testimony all over the world he'll write it down he'll put a horse there and then somebody will write the horse and go to all those provinces you cannot do that today you use the media now and those who are sitting back in our church and say deeper life what are we doing now what do you what jesus wants done we're sending the gospel to all the world come on board and join us and whatever you can do bring your time bring your skill bring your money bring everything this gospel shall be preached in all the world and many will come to the Lord in every nation through you, through me, and through us together in Jesus' name. And somebody there will say, Amen. Amen. It will be done and you'll be part of it. I will be part of it. I will be part of it. The Lord bless the work of your hand for the salvation of souls in Jesus' name. And look at number two here. Number two here, the failing attitude of the graceful Galatians. Failing attitude. Look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Now, the attitude of uh, the Galatians uh, was winning. It was declining. It was going down. He said, I remember the blessedness of your love, your affection for me at the beginning. But now, I told you the truth. Now, I told you that Christ Jesus is the only way. I told you he is the only Savior. I told you nobody can come to the Heavenly Father. Nobody can get to God. Nobody can get to heaven except by Christ and Christ alone that the law of Moses will not get you there. Turning over a new leaf will not get you there. Religious observances will not get you there. Self-righteousness will not get you there. 
that's the truth and now the blessedness that i saw before that you could pluck out your eyes and give that to me i can't see that anymore it's like now you are withdrawing yourself from me i can't even see you and i can't even talk to you where are you it says am i therefore become your enemy because i tell you the truth now that's about galatians and paul the apostle let's talk about ourselves do you am i becoming your enemy because i tell you that without holiness no man shall see the lord that's the word of god am i becoming your enemy by saying that blessed are the pure in heart because only they shall see God. Am I becoming your enemy by telling you that if you are going to get to heaven, he gave himself for us that he might purify us from all sin and then he will so cleanse us and purchase to himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Am I become your enemy because I tell you that if you are indolent, if you are idle, if you are not working for God, if you are just like that, and Jesus meets you when he comes like that, that you will be a person that will be poor all through eternity. There will be no reward at all. I might become your enemy because I tell you, wake up and reconsecrate yourself again and recommit yourself again. And everything you laid on the altar before that you have taken away from the altar, bring it back to the altar and let your consecration be beyond what it was many years ago and with all your heart all your soul and all your mind you love the Lord without reservation, without a rival and without anyone to compete with your love for God, as the truth I told you that will make you acceptable to God, that will make you keep in the love of God and like Paul the Apostle asked the Galatians, I am I'm also asking you therefore am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth we will not be enemies we'll be in unity together in Jesus name as I'm pulling it up you are joining and you are pulling it up with me in Jesus name as I'm running as I'm declaring as I'm persuading as I'm saying that this is the will of God even your sanctification you will say yes to everything you will say amen to everything your heart will be aligned to everything in Jesus name uh, look at uh, first kings uh, chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 20 first kings chapter 21 reading from verse 20 and ahab said to elijah as thou find found me O oh mine enemy now those galatians who are now acting and talking and behaving like ahab ahab saw elijah and he said, as thou found me, O mine enemy. Now, Ahab, why did you say that? How could you say that? Elijah was a prophet of God. And he was sent of God to declare the word to the nation. And he wanted to bring the nation back to God. How could such a person be an enemy to you? He said, he answered, I have found thee. He didn't argue. Elijah did not say, am I your enemy? He wasn't afraid. Am I your enemy? He wasn't feeling lonely. You are the most important number one in our nation. And then you count me as your enemy. How could you say that? Elijah said, yes, I have found you. Because thou hast sold thyself unto walk evil in the sight of the Lord. I pray that the people God is using to touch our lives, to transform our lives, and to get us ready for the coming of the Lord will not count them as enemies in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, the fervent admonitions not for their good. In Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 17, the zealously affect you. The Judaizers, the people that promoted circumcision, and the people that spoke about the law.